What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video and tonight Blackmagic just dropped a bombshell on us. Arguably the best pro video app for the iPhone just got a 2.0 release, a huge update to the Blackmagic camera app specifically for iOS. Small note on that, I was very curious if they would start doing iOS and Android like simultaneous updates, but this one is specifically for iOS. But yeah, for now, Apple devices only. So what comes in this 2.0 update? Well, when you look at the update list, it's not a very long one, but each item on this list is incredible. I honestly believe that, at least for me, everything that I've been asking for for the past year has finally been answered, and I don't know if I can think of any other features that I want this app to have. Before we run through the updates, I just want to give a quick shout out to today's sponsor, and that is Bscript. If you've been around here for a while, you know that Bscript is my go-to accessory maker for all pro filmmaking equipment. I've been doing a crazy 30-day challenge over on Instagram where I'm building up this insane iPhone rig, and at the Part of it is pretty much all Beast Grip equipment, like the Beast Cage for iPhone 15 Pro Max. They make their own lenses, filters, everything you need to take your iPhone filmmaking to the next level. If you don't trust my word, trust Apple's. They've been releasing a ton more behind the scenes footage in the past year of how they're making all their different events, commercials, and films. And I'd say about 90% of the time, you'll see an iPhone inside of the Bscript Pro or the Beast Cage. If you want to learn more about Bscript products, check out the top link in the description below. So now let's talk about the Blackmagic camera app. But first, let's start with the smaller updates. If we head over to our media page, we can see all of our different clips in here. And before, let's say you transferred all the footage to your computer, you don't need it on your phone anymore. So now you wanna go in and select everything to delete. The way you had to do it before was hit select and then go through one at a time. That would take forever. But now they have this new option in the top middle here where I can just select that and it automatically selects all the clips. So now you can quickly delete everything all at once. Next up, if you have an iPhone 15 Pro or Pro Max, you actually now have some slow motion options. Now, while I wish they could figure out a way to do some like 4K 120 or something, for this, you have to go down to HD. So let's go in here, change our resolution to HD. Probably we also have to go down to HEVC maybe. Maybe no Apple log. Getting a little sad for the slow motion. Hmm, do we have that before? Now on mine, it says I can go to 120 FPS. HD captures are now possible at 100 FPS on iPhone 15 Pro. But the only way I'm seeing that you can get it is by having HEVC, H.265, HD, and Rec. 709. It is not looking like I am able to do it in Apple Log. Hmm, bummer. I was kind of hoping that I could have Apple Log and 100 FPS, even if it was just an HD. If you figured out a different way to do it, let me know in the comments below. All right. So now we're on to the big item here. And for this, I gotta scooch this guy in. You're seeing that correctly. The Blackmagic camera app is now officially supported on the iPad. You have all the same great features that you expect on the phone, on an iPad. But of course, what I'm mostly interested in is what I've been asking for since day one and what I was very jealous of when the Final Cut Pro camera came out a couple months ago directly from Apple is the remote monitoring feature. That's right, you can now use your phone or iPad or vice versa as a remote camera and a monitor. And if you use it as a monitor, you can do multiple devices just like the Final Cut Pro camera. So let's dive in how to do it. So now if I go on my phone, for example, we go into our settings. At the bottom, we will see a new section for remote camera control. So I'm gonna turn that on and then you have a series of settings depending on which device you're choosing to use as a camera and which one you're viewing it on. So on here, I wanna use this as a camera because most likely I'm gonna set my phone somewhere and I wanna use my iPad as the monitor. So I have remote camera controlled on, use this iPhone as a remote camera. I could change it to controller. So if you have two iPhones with you, you can have one monitor, one uh, as a camera. So that's pretty cool. And then I just gave it camera name A. Uh, you can put a passcode. Seems like it can be anything. I wonder if I can leave it blank. Okay, it looks like you have to have something. Okay, can literally be one. And this camera is available for control and monitor or monitor only. And then everything else is blinked out because if we go to our iPad, go into settings, 
go to remote camera control, we have this turned on as well, but this one is set up as a controller. So for this one, the middle section is blank because we're not giving it a camera name, but we have our uh, options here at the bottom that we can turn on or off. So sync record across cameras. This is really cool because if you have say two, three, four cameras all synced to here, if you hit record, it's gonna simultaneously record on all the phones at once. You don't have to like hit them all and you know, accidentally not hit record on one of your phones. You can hide the remote video camera feed or dim the remote cameras on record, saving battery life, heating, that sort of stuff. Now for me, I'm gonna keep those all off for now because I'm just connecting one phone and I don't really care to dim the screen. So now we just go back to our regular camera feed. And if we do it on both devices, on our phone, which is the camera here, on, we'll see this little remote icon towards the top left. If I tap on it on the phone, nothing happens because this is set up for remote camera. But since this is set up as the controller, when I tap on here, I get a new little menu screen in the middle. And so this is actually going to show up available cameras. So right now I have the iPad itself and the phone. And so I can turn on my phone right here. It's going to ask for the password, which I, of course, just set as one. I'll hit connect here. And let's, I'm just curious. I can use the iPad as well. So now technically I have two cameras set up. I have the camera built into the iPad and my phone. And as you can see, if I set this up, the latency is pretty good. It's not bad. Definitely for all my use cases, this is more than acceptable. Uh, the preview quality is also really good. And again, remember, you can set this up to be monitor only, or you can set it up to be uh, control. So all these controls around the outer edge are the controls from my phone. So I can go in and I can adjust the ISO, white balance, and of course I can hit record and all that good stuff. On the phone we can see this new little yellow uh, outline showing that it is uh, being remotely monitored. And in this top left I can see a little slider for going back and forth between my multiple cameras. So right now I'm controlling the phone but if I hit that little arrow, now I'm controlling this. Let's just say this is another phone. Um, but again, I could go in, adjust all my settings for this camera. And if you wanna see both or all of your cameras at the same time, you just hit that little multi-view button right there. And now I can see my camera A, camera B. And this is just so cool. This is basically the Final Cut Pro camera on steroids. It brought all those same features that we loved from that app and now it's finally in the Blackmagic camera app. This is exactly what I would have wanted to see from a 2.0 release, and being about a month before the new iPhone 16, this could not have come at a better time. Let me know in the comments below if you think the Blackmagic camera app is still missing any features, because, man, besides figuring out that slow motion stuff, this monitoring feature was exactly on my holiday wish list. So thank you, Blackmagic. Thank you, B-Script, for sponsoring this video, and I'll see you guys in the next video.